let's spin it over to the Rams before we break because the loss hurts their playoff chance that we didn't think they had. They win three in a row. They get out of seller mode at the trade deadline to we're good. Let's roll. Cooper Cup, no. Matthew Stafford, no. Not that that was ever much of a thing from the Rams' perspective, but if you're going to trade Cooper Cup, why aren't you considering the best offer you can get for Matthew Stafford? Now they're they're in it, but now at 4-5, and five, they're currently 10th in the pecking order in the NFC, Devin. They suddenly have some work to do to climb into legitimate playoff consideration. With that one loss, it threw everything off for them. They got their work cut out for them. Yeah, and that's the amazing thing about the NFL. They have this huge Thursday night game with Minnesota a few weeks ago. They come out. It's like, this is why they didn't trade these guys. Look at these guys. They're playing so well. They still have a shot. This division is not solidified by anybody. They can go win it. And then a few weeks later, you play against a Dolphins team who is struggling, and you just get nothing going all night. I mean, Joe Buck and Troy Aikman must have said it like 15, 20 times that talking to Sean McVay, he said, we continue to shoot ourselves in the foot. We continue to get in our own way. And when you say that in your production meeting and you're sitting with the guys and you say that, that lets me know that there's an emphasis all week on we got to stop doing this. The last few weeks probably of, look, guys, this is, what, this is why we keep losing. Or, hey, we're winning these games, but it's this close to losing. So, like, that to me was a disappointing point for the Rams last night of, hey, this keeps happening, but then we keep doing it. Bobby Brown, defensive tackle, headbutts, headbutts a, a guy on, on Miami. A good positive play for the defense gets nullified, 15-yard penalty. Like those little things that ultimately they don't determine the game, but they just stack on like these probably last night, probably eight to ten plays that they had where you're like, we're just negating good plays for us. Like the goal of a football team and in a football game, you want to put as many good plays as possible. It's impossible to have a perfect game. You're never going to be perfect on every single play. But the amount of positive good plays you stack together, and you could then you can have a, a couple of explosive plays, game changing interceptions, long touchdowns, plays like that, then you win games. The Rams just had too many bad plays. And the problem when you start talking about the playoffs is this continues to be a constant problem. So now it's like, all right, how do we fix this? What are we not doing every single day in practice that pushes us away from these negative poor judgment plays, whatever you want to call it, lack of focus plays? Like, how do we get out of that? And I think McVay needs to maybe up something in practice, make I don't know what it is. Do something different to get these guys to realize this is happening at every point in the game. It's not like we just need to fix our two-minute drive or our third down offense or defense. These are happening all over the game because we're just not aware of it when a situation comes up and we continue to make the bad mistake that holds us back. So that to me was the alarming thing of they've been talking about it and now you have a Monday night game to fix it. And it seems like it was probably at its worst last night. And, Devin, even though the Rams have a better record right now than the Dolphins, I feel a lot better about Miami's playoff chances than I do the Rams because we've got, obviously, four division winners in the NFC. But you've got two teams that are very good in the NFC East, the Eagles and the Commanders. You've got three yep. in the NFC. There are your wild card spots right there. Second place team in the NFC East second and third place team in the NFC North. And the Rams are chasing the Packers who hold the tiebreaker if the Rams are hoping to get in that way and not by winning the division where they're now a game and a half behind the Cardinals who blew the Rams out earlier this season. They hold the tiebreaker the Rams do against the Vikings, but they're three games behind now after losing last night. This is going to be a tough one for the Rams. Their best path is going to be to win the division. They're going to have a hard time tracking down the Packers, the Commanders, or the Vikings for a wild card berth. And now all of a sudden, this San Francisco team, who <clears throat> was probably the favorite in the division, all of a sudden, you look like you're behind them. And then Christian McCaffrey's back now. So to me, they, they have found a good rhythm, winning a few games in a row. And it was just like, they need to keep going with this. They, 
And when you watch them, I think there's an excitement when you watch that young defensive line. But then you look at the other side, and you just talked about maybe trading Cup, maybe trading Stafford. There's kind of a – there's also a, like, let's win now because at the key position in all of football, we have a guy who's a guy. So when he's gone, we're going to have to try to fix this thing. So, again, I think think it's going to be hard for them because it's at that point in the season where each loss becomes a bigger loss depending on what happened throughout the conference and throughout your division. So when you lose and San Francisco wins or this team wins, it makes it harder and harder for you to be a playoff team. The Rams are in this weird mode where it feels like they want to turn the page from their championship team and move forward with a new era of the Rams but there's enough left of the guys who delivered the Super Bowl 56 win. When you augment that with the younger players, maybe we can still be a playoff team. You know, sometimes the longer you delay the reset, the harder it is to do it. And what are you really delaying the reset for? We might get a playoff game. Like, we're not going to compete for a championship. That's the reality, and that's what's got to be hard for some of these teams. And I don't want to say that it's impossible, but I'll go back to where we started the segment. When you gratuitously mentioned the Vikings, and you triggered me. Like, the Vikings aren't winning the Super Bowl this year. They're just not. That team that was sleepwalking its way to a 12-7 to win over the Jaguars is not going to win the Super Bowl because you got to have stellar quarterback play to win the Super Bowl. And we're not going to get that out of a guy who the more time he has to throw, the less accurate he is. It's not going to happen. And I think that's a challenge for the Rams. Like those three wins in a row might have done more harm than good over the Mm. long haul because they're delaying the reset. They need to reset. And if they miss the playoffs this year, then I think that's when the reset's going to happen. That's when Cooper Cup does get traded. That's when Matthew Stafford moves on. That's when the Rams try to do, at the quarterback position, the stuff they've been able to do at these other positions where they just, hey, great player here, great player there, mid-round pick here. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's he's a pro bowler. They need to redirect some of that toward finding, scouting, developing a young quarterback they went all in for Stafford with the trade three years ago they're I think top order of business for 2025 offseason is let's find a young quarterback that can become our 10-year franchise answer yeah I I I agree with you and maybe that's going to get a veteran maybe there's a guy that they love in a draft, but they're not sure if they'll be able to get them. So there's a later round guy that they might like, and maybe there's a go get a veteran quarterback that can come in and help in the beginning of this so we evaluate this young guy and see if he can actually be the guy going forward. Because there's no, there's no like set stone rule that you need to have like this top five to 10 pick to find your franchise quarterback. Like you just need to find the guy that fits for what you're trying to do. And maybe there's a bridge quarterback out there. Shoot. Maybe it's Sam Darnold next year that could be their bridge quarterback that comes in and helps them get over the hump of, hey, we're not going to be the worst team ever in the league where we got to go through two and three win seasons to ultimately try to be good. But we'll be an okay, decent team, and we'll have this guy kind of learn from him, learn the offense, and then he'll take over and be our quarterback of the future. Maybe that's something that they start to eye, and we got to give credit. Their, Their front office has done a fantastic job the last few years. Even now, when you look at this team and they lost the first round pick, I think it was seven years in a row, and you look at some of the guys they have out there playing football, they found some gems. So hopefully they can work their magic as they start to try to rebuild because I don't, I don't see this team in the playoffs this year. So I think, I think I agree with you that this will be the year where they start that rebuild process. You know, it's funny you mentioned Sam Darnold. And I think back to the first five weeks of the season when it's like, gee, what are the Vikings going to do? Is Darnold going to be the starter next year too and not J.J. McCarthy? And I said, these – these things have a way of revealing their answer at the appropriate time. So we have our answer. Yes, Darnold will be available to be signed by the Rams to be the bridge quarterback <laughs> next year. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.